from soaring IQ scores to Ivy League degrees, having a brilliant mind didn't stop some of the most notorious killers of our time from carrying out their deadly fantasies. Today, Daily Mail TV is taking an in-depth look at the real-life evil geniuses who thought they would get away with murder. Joining us now to discuss these criminal savants is CrimeOnline.com's Nancy Grace. So Nancy, let's start with serial rapist and killer Rodney Alcala. He was dubbed the dating game killer after appearing on an episode of the 1970s dating game TV show during his killing spree. He was sentenced to death for five murders, but police believe he may have killed dozens more. Nancy, he also has a reported IQ of 170, making him possibly the most intelligent serial killer of our time. Nancy, what can you tell us about Alcala? Maybe one of the most intelligent serial killers of all times, but also tied for the number one most prolific serial killer in the U.S. Uh, Alcala, yes, was once on the dating game. I've watched it over and over and over again to see what I could learn and investigated this. But uh, remember, the woman actually picked him, Jesse, but then later backed out of the date because she thought he was creepy. I know that much. Boy, was she right. Now, this is what's so disturbing. Disturbing. In addition to all the murders that Alcala has committed, he would lure people by offering them jobs or to take their pictures. And when he was arrested in many of the locations where he has killed people all around the country, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of photographs of women. We don't know who they are, and they are all in extremely vulnerable positions. I have looked at many of the photos myself. We don't know if these are his other murder victims, Jesse. All right, Nancy, we're now going to move on to domestic terrorist Ted Kaczynski, otherwise known as the Unabomber. He was famous for sending mail bombs that resulted in three deaths. He was also a Harvard-educated math prodigy, though, with a genius-level IQ of 167. So, Nancy, what do you think the motive was behind this evil genius's diabolical plot? Okay, I'd like to say that this guy was a nut, but that would not account for the fact that he is at a genius IQ. Now, yes, he was Harvard educated. As a matter of fact, uh, they recently had a reunion and they actually sent him a questionnaire, Jesse, and for occupation he put prisoner, and for awards he listed all of his murder convictions. Okay. Uh, this guy was motivated out of uh, where he had come from and where he ended up. He left Harvard and moved to a rustic log cabin and began to hate, as he called it, industrialism. He was very much into tricking police and would even leave false clues within the bombs. That's how smart this guy was. All right, let's talk now about recently convicted submarine scientist and inventor Peter Madsen, who brutally murdered and dismembered journalist mm -hmm. Kim Wall when she accepted his invite to go sailing in his submarine. Nancy, what can you tell us about Madsen and his motive? Well, number one, he also was brilliant. He had built three submarines, Jesse, Three. I mean, imagine if somebody told you or me to go build a submarine. I mean, I guess I would go to the kitchen and try to figure out what to do. This guy is brilliant, but he's also got, got a twisted mind. He's perverted because when he was finally arrested, dozens and dozens of porn films, of uh, films of women being murdered and tortured were found. As a matter of fact, the night before he committed the murder on Kim Wall, he had been looking at beheading, agony, torturing women. All of those were found on his computer searches. Now, yes, he had these fetishes, but he was very, very repressed as a child, and it blew up in the murder of Kim. It's so scary to think how such intelligent people can create these diabolical and evil plots. Nancy, as always, thank you so much for being with us and shedding insight on these cases.